Hello, the following exclusive interview is presented by H.S. Clark, author of Secret Thoughts and Medical Thriller. For more interviews and information on Secret Thoughts and Medical Thriller, visit hsclarkmystery.com. This is Author Spotlight featuring Jenny Milchman, author of Ruin Falls. Hello, I'm H.S. Clark. And uh, I'm here in beautiful Olympia in the state of Washington. This is our capital, and we're having one of our atypical, gorgeous uh, uh, Washington days. And I'm lucky to be here with Jenny Milchman. And Jenny Milchman is an author of psychological thrillers. I want to show you her latest book, Ruin Falls. And she's here in Orca Books in uh, downtown Olympia in order to discuss and sign her new book, so Jenny, the first thing I want to do is say thank you for, for uh, talking to us, and can you tell us a little bit about your book? Sure, and thank you for talking to me. Um, I just drove down after a very long time, so uh, if I tremble or anything, chalk it up to the car ride. But Ruin we'll Falls, that. Ruin Falls came to me when we were on another long car ride, and we got upgraded to a suite when we finally arrived. This is a very nice thing when you're on long car trips because you're living in a confined kind of environment and you get to spread out a little bit. But I'm a suspense writer. And when I go to tuck my kids into the sleeper sofa in the outer room of the suite, it occurs to me that when you're in a suite versus a hotel room, the kids sleep near the exit door. And the parents are a whole room away. And I knew that I was going to write a book where the mom kind of sleep stumbles out into that sleeper sofa room and discovers that her kids are gone. Wow. I also knew that the kids were going to have to be safe. So I knew that the suspense in Ruin Falls was going to come not from would the kids survive, but would the mom become a person who could get them back. Now you've been a psychotherapist yourself. I have. So you're bringing obviously some of that uh, experience into your writing. I think so. In terms of the fear and in terms of the emotions and, and also in terms of maybe the, you know, the things that people go to therapy to come to terms with, quite bravely I might add, are things that I think my characters are going to have to dig deep and, and, and find in themselves without the benefit of you know, psychotherapy. You were on a long book tour before for your first uh, novel, uh, Cover of Snow. I'm going to show that to you here. This is her first one, Cover of Snow. Uh, rumored to be the longest book tour in history. <laughs> and how did that happen? How did you end up on such a long book, book tour? Book tour was seven months and 35,000 oh miles. Oh my, oh my. Um, how did I wind up? Well, it took me 13 years to get published. And I think when something goes on that long and is such a struggle, it takes on the quality of a, it was a dream. It was also a family endeavor by the time we actually, I saw a book in a beautiful bookstore like, like Orca. Um, and and finally, I guess a third factor is that the only thing harder than getting a first novel published is building a lasting career as an author. You wrote your first book in kindergarten, I heard it <laughs> I'm not including those books in the trying to get published, but I did, yes. I, I yes, wrote a small yes, yes, so, you, so your interest de definitely goes way back. It goes way back. And now you've got uh, a daughter who's uh, threatening to be a writer? She's threatening, yes. Yeah, yes, right, yes. right. When she was two years old, I knew she had the writing bug because I sent her down to the bathroom with her toothbrush and her little brother's toothbrush. Mm -hmm. I know you're not you're thinking, what a toothbrush, but this is what happened. She goes down the stairs with the two toothbrushes. The twins were on their way home. <laughs> <laughs> she had a whole plot outline yep. ready to go. So um, you, you really wanted to uh, go out in the woods and uh, build your own log cabin and, and write poetry. I think you were going to be the next uh, Thoreau or something like that. You know, that was the goal. So uh, how did you go so wrong? How did, how did that, <laughs> what happened along the way to get you here? Well, this is what happened, actually. I mean, you're right. I wanted to, yes, live in a log cabin of my own making. Um, I mean, part of the problem, of course, was that I'd never wielded a hammer, so that log cabin might not have done so well. But I was working as a psychotherapist at a rural community mental health center, uh -huh. and I had these very frightening cases. I had a mom who brought her little five-year-old cherubic blonde child in who had just killed the family pet. I did group therapy in a group probably about this size, and uh, one of the patients took out a gun. She wanted to end her life with all her dear kind of people around her. And it was almost as if life was a psychological suspense novel. And it occurred to me as kind of a light bulb moment that if you want to be a writer, you write the kinds of books you love to read. And that's what I sat down and started to write. Now it'd still be 11 years before I could write anything publishable. And you, uh, you start out from uh, the Hudson Valley of New York State, my, my old stomping grounds, because mm. I grew up around there as, as well. And um, uh, now you've made this long trek out Tell here. us about 
the interesting experiences you've had uh, on this tour? Oh, the interesting. Well, yes, we are on. So this is this is concludes month one of the second world's longest book tour. So we have three more months to go. Um, and we did. We came sea to shining sea. So this, last night I was in Bellingham, which is a beautiful, beautiful part of beautiful. the state that I'd never seen before. I was with the Red Wheelbarrow Riders. And I don't know if this counts as interesting or just incredibly luxurious and nice, but drove up to this gorgeous house and our hosts had cooked this, you know, gourmet dinner for us. Northwest hospitality. I guess so. Yeah. And now you've come out with Ruin Falls. How, how has that been going so far? Do you know? I mean, really, I wish I knew. That's, I think, one of the interesting parts of publishing is that we really don't, don't know. I hope that, you know, I get nice letters from readers, and that's really what it's all about. I hope I, it's doing I know as a writer myself that it's always uh, fun to um, talk about psychotherapy. Once you've got the characters in the book and the book is published, now everyone else is in the loony bin with you, <laughs> and they all know your characters, they all know what's going Have on. Have you gotten much feedback on um, Ruin Falls yet? So from readers, definitely. Readers have been wonderful, and I think that is what it's all about, and, and making that connection. And you're right, they're there in the loony bin, and your world has come onto the page, and they share it with is you. Is Ruin Falls a standalone, or is this a continuation? Is there a crossover between Ruin Falls and Cover of Snow? So both novels take place in the same fictional town in the Adirondacks. I know you said that New York State was your stomping ground. Mm -hmm. so but I will say that there is a tiny little character in Cover of Snow who plays a big role in Ruin Falls. Tell us a little bit about your protagonist in Ruin Falls. Her name is Liz, and she starts out the novel very passive and controlled by the, the man in her life. But something's going to happen to her that is so stark and so terrible, and she's going to be on her own for it, that she's really going to have to become uh, a person she never was in order to balance the scales of justice. And that's what I love in my novels. I love that balance. I love that that's getting it. back to where things are supposed okay. to be like and that. and a, a recurrent theme seems to be uh, your ability to get yourself lost or uh, <laughs> and I, I heard some rumors that you've gotten lost in the woods a few times <laughs> did those rumors make it all the way to Olympia they, they, did. they um, did they made it all the way here I've gotten lost in the woods several times I also started out in the Adirondacks on my honeymoon we had to go on two different honeymoons the first we were going to go backcountry canoeing in the Adirondacks until we got chased out by black flies so ah. we could have gotten but I think those black flies were kind of a godsend because we were going into the backcountry for three weeks with no experience whatsoever. I mean, the two of us had not even spent a what whole night What were you in thinking? Camp. What were we thinking? Exactly. So somebody sent black flies to be like, get, the, get, back, to, get back to New Jersey. We went to Paris. <laughs> it, was, it, it, was, it, was, it was a message for the, from a higher power to send you to Paris. Uh, You're now promoting your new book. Is there another one in the works? Yes, my third novel just sold. It'll be coming out in 2015. Uh, do we get an exclusive sneak preview? Yeah, this no will spoilers? be the sneakest. No spoilers? No, just but you're right. Yeah, I haven't said this to anyone. So it's called Hard Time. And Hard it is times. about a woman who lives in Weedskill. She opens up her door to find two prisoners on her doorstep. Ah, so take place in the same locale? Absolutely. Weedskill, New York, the fictional town that I hope to put on the map. And when do you anticipate this will actually be published? And maybe about a year from now, if about I'm lucky. Will, my... will you still be on book tour? <laughs> <laughs> we will have come back and I will have hopefully written another novel, uh, but I do hope very much to be back here when it does come out. All right, that's great. So as, as, as a first, on H.S. Uh, Clark Presents Author Spotlight. I'm going to get one of your books and I'm going to ask you to sign it right here. <laughs> Live. Live. I would love to. Now shall I put your name on it? Because all authors know that sometimes these books are uh, you know, sold on eBay. Uh, yes, you can put my name on it. See, H. You, we have that on camera. H.S. Clark. This is my first time having someone sign on my on my podcast. And now you'll see that I take a long time. That That's is a good. luxury. That's good. As a reflection of the care and feeding you <laughs> take with your writing as well. And how much I value my readers. And then how long you take on your book tours. <laughs> <laughs> We're getting a theme of slow. We're definitely getting a theme of slow, careful, and very enjoyable. Well, I thank you so much for, you. For, for talking to us. Thank it you. was great. Uh, on behalf of myself, H.S. Clark, I hope you enjoyed this. Thank you for watching this exclusive interview presented by H.S. Clark, author of Secret Thoughts, a medical thriller. For more interviews and information on Secret Thoughts, a medical thriller, visit hsclarkmystery.com.